think. I think it is. Yeah. Here we go. It's kind of on, kind of off. Oh, okay, you know, what do you think? It's 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 air, but not on air. Oh, we're getting the thumbs up. All right. Here we go. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Mike Valancourt. I chair the uh, Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. Welcome this evening. Uh, we will open tonight's agenda for uh, our Tuesday, October twenty third meeting. Um, this is the, the call to order. I'll use the gavel, which I will to do. And uh, our first order of business is to approve the minutes from our August 28th, 2018 meeting, uh, which has circulated. Everybody's reviewed those, uh, I think, via email and, and otherwise. Uh, any comments, thoughts on the August 28th meeting minutes? Could we entertain a motion to approve those minutes? I'm so moved. So moved by Kevin. Second. We have a second. I am. Any discussion? All in favor? That is unanimous. Very good. Thank you. Um, we have no old business to attend to, so we will move directly into new business. And our first item on the new business agenda is to hear the request of Kent Shoemaker. Showmaker? Showmaker. Owner of the property at 600 Preble Street, map U2, lot 5, to expand a non-conforming single-family dwelling by adding a roof deck based on section 19-4-3, B4 of the zoning ordinance. And I will first ask our code enforcement officer to brief us on the application. Sure. Uh, the, the showmakers uh, came to talk to me about doing a roof deck on a portion of their house. Most of their house is two-story, and then a small section of it is one-story, and they would like to add a deck on top of the one-story portion of the house. Uh, they don't meet the 10-foot side setback, so I explained to them that they would either need to come to the zoning board or pull the deck in. I believe it was four feet. They would have to pull the deck back four feet in order to meet the 10-foot setback, and uh, they didn't think it would look good architecturally to pull it back like that, so they decided it was better to come to the zoning board. Very good. Great. And uh, Mr. Showmaker, if you'd like to proceed with your presentation, you're welcome to do so. Uh, I really just want I, I, I would ask that you step to the microphone just so that we have a recording of this, as painful as it can be. I'm going to um, assume that you have the enclosures that I have here of the, the boundary survey and the mortgage survey. And what you can see is that there is apparently an old porch that was over the last hundred years was closed in to create a four season room. What we really wish to do is reconstruct the porch so it actually is square with the rest of the house. While doing that, replace the roof and then put a deck on top of that roof area, which would be accessed um, through a second story bedroom. That would uh, both give us, you know, a nice little view out the backyard without impinging on our neighbors' views as far as um, it occurs to us anyway. And it would also give us egress from the second floor should there be any problems on the first floor. So. up for questions and you can stay, stand by stay there for, for just a moment so how will you access the deck will you, will you switch those windows out it will be doorways yes, we'll switch the windows out and put a sliding glass door so we've discussed it with a couple of contractors and we have not uh, got a contract with them yet but that's kind of the approach so And in terms of the, the first floor, you're, you're fully reconstructing that three season room, four season room well, as we well? Really do. The, the floor is um, canted, so there's, it's probably four inches lower on one side than the other side, so mm -hmm. we're going to have a floor level. Um, two approaches have been suggested. One is we could just remove the roof and then um, move it up a little bit, but uh, one contractor at least has suggested it, it would be a better construction project if we reframed it. So you'd like to level the floor out and then reframe the walls. Straighten the windows out a little bit because as you can probably see in the pictures, the windows are not straight. Straighten the roof at the same time and then put a 
flat system roof on the top there. We would just put some railings and create that deck system. If you do reconstruct, are you going to keep this side door in the deck yes. in the exact same place yes. existing? No, no changes to that? No, okay. No other changes. Okay. And so the footprint, of, the footprint of that first floor isn't changing at all. It's being built in the same. No, it's it not. Way. Okay. Any further questions from the applicant at the moment? None at this time. Stand down, thank you. Additional comments from the public? Are you looking at drawings of this proposed deck or are you looking at a photograph of the existing I'd ask that you step from the microphone if you have questions or comments to make. And just please, please identify yeah, yourself. I'm Rob Mainville. I live at 598 Preble Street uh, nice. in Cape Lizard. We border uh, Kent's property. Okay. And I'm wondering, um, right now, currently, their house, um, I measured from their house to our property line, it's uh, four foot three inches. So it's very tight and congested in there. Um, currently, from our kitchen or our back deck, um, we basically look right through their windows and of course they look through our windows. We're, we're just that close together. Um, ours is an older house that was built in 1913. Um, their house is actually, I think it's a little bit later, um, and I think it was built as a guest house um, for the staff of what was then a hotel, which is to the right of us if you're leaving our house. So it's a tiny house, we're, we're literally right on top of each other. Um, as are the neighbors across from them as well. So I just wanted to see if there was a way I might be able to look at any drawings or renderings, um, if they've in fact been done or presented to you guys, um, just to get a better scope of what they're looking, looking to do. Um, and at the very least, I'd like to, um, if it's approved, I would like to see if there might be a way where they could put, um, sort of finish like the railing so that it's sort of blocking the view from the left, which is our property line, because we sit so tightly um, close together as it is. So. Have you seen the packet that the applicant submitted? No, I have not. I haven't had a chance to. There's, okay. there's, there's not a rendering in the packet. It's, uh, ba it's basically photographs of the existing house and a shaded area where the roof deck is going to go. Right. The f and the, f the photograph of the existing house, does it show the house to the left and right of it currently? It does. Okay. So you, you get an idea of how close they are together. So, so you, you are to the, to the left? Uh, yeah. If, I, um, if we're in the back of our house and I look to the right, uh, they so, are. So you're the... Nice. The, the darker colored home with the lighter trim? Uh, we're the ones that have the, uh, yeah, we're to the right in the photograph. Oh, the the right, photograph. okay, yeah. okay. Gotcha. So, from our bedroom window, our attic window, our bedroom windows and our kitchen windows and our deck, we have a view of, of you know, their house and the specific location where um, the proposed deck is, uh, is gonna be placed. Right. There's also a survey plan that shows mm -hmm. the proximity of the deck to the proximity of the other structures. Yeah. And then the survey, like, I, I haven't been around to notice this, but my wife said that they had a survey done and that there were markers all around um, the, the other house, the opposite house of this one, and in the backyard, but nothing on our side to indicate where the property line is on our side. So I don't know if that was done when you had the survey done, but I, we, we didn't see any, any markings for that. I, I, I didn't bring my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, let me just... 
Just see No, I think I can see it. Yeah, thanks. But anyway, that's all I had to say. Hey, stand by for just just a moment, sure. if you would. It, it, it appears as though you're, you're uh, the the attic windows or the the upstairs windows that the the, the, the dormers the dormers that you refer to those are set back a little bit. Are those behind the evergreen somewhat? Yeah, those are, those are set back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and so, what specifically would be your concern with anything coming off the the the, the level on on the on the second uh, floor of? The showmaker's house. Well, our bedroom is the closest window to theirs. If you look on the side, where the, on the back of the house where the porch is. Okay. So we would have a clear shot of looking at their deck all day long. Okay. Gotcha. And as I said, I'm not necessarily opposed to the deck. I just wanted to see, um, first of all, a drawing, if that was available, if they had done a drawing, which obviously there's no drawing yet. Um, but I also wanted to see if there was a way that if they did erect this addition or deck, um, that there might be some privacy walls contained in at least the side that's facing our house. I'm not sure that the other neighbors can even see it from their vantage point, but right. I guess my, my, my point is, um, why have a setback at all if we're here, you know, talking about adjusting the setback in an area that's arguably the most congested set of houses I've ever seen in this town? other than apartment buildings, so. Well, just to understand our job is to, is to read the ordinance and convey it to the best of our ability. Right. Um, ha have you spoken with, with the showmakers about this at all, or you have? Uh, no, I just didn't, didn't feel like it was, um, you know. That, that's there's okay. a little bit, there's not, I wouldn't say animosity, but there was a fence that was erected without our knowledge until they started driving stakes into the ground and putting the fence up. And that, that's, okay. that's okay. Not knowing where the property lines were at the time or anything. Um, they probably had, I'm guessing that they pulled the permit and had it surveyed if they needed to do that. But there was just a fence put up and I guess fences make great neighbors at the end of the day. And I'll leave it at that. Let, let me ask you, do you have concerns about drainage, runoff, is any of that, I mean, none of that obviously is impacted by, by this? No, I don't think so. Okay. Any additional questions at the moment? All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for your input. Who do I give this back to? This evening. All right, hearing none, we will close the meeting to public comment and uh, we can discuss as a board. First, Ben, I would ask uh, our code enforcement officer, Ben McDougall, what, if any, um, feedback you've received via email or otherwise. I didn't receive any. I have a question for Ben. If we're at that point now, um, what are what are the standards for a railing on a deck like this? Um, given how high it is, clearly there's some sort of minimum yeah, 30, height they would have to be, right? Yeah, a 36 inch tall barrier that uh, at no point can a four inch sphere pass through that barrier. And is there any design considerations of what that looks like? That might not be totally in your purview, but is there a wide range? Could it be? Wood, metal, yeah, it can be wire, you know, whatever. traditional wood okay. balusters are typically done four inches on center. Uh, the the new cable horizontal cable rails have been popular in the past few years. Okay. And there, are, am I correct in saying that there are not any uh, proposals as part of this application for any kind of? sort of view, view barriers on the other side of the... I, I haven't seen a design okay. of it. Yeah, privacy panels. Kind of All right, so the comment was just made from the audience about the possibility of privacy panels, just for the record.
Ben, I have a question for you. Um, do we know what the height of the house is, either up to the chimney or to the, into, into the roofing? I don't. Maybe 20 feet? Yeah, looks like 20, 20 22 feet. Three plus the foundation, maybe? Maybe a slight downward slope? Yeah, I'd say that's about right. And based on the application, um, the shading is on this, the last page of the, app, uh, of the application. There's a side view. And essentially, that portion of the structure is just going to go flattened with the deck railing up 36 inches from either base of the window or if they flatten the roof. That's what we're talking about. That, that's what I'm assuming, but we may want to ask the applicant that question. Mr. Showmaker, if you wouldn't mind approaching the podium again for just a moment. Um, the plan was essentially to replace the, the low pitched roof with a flat roof. So we're, we're not extending the roof upwards um, other than uh, to the height where we could have easy egress from the second floor. Um, we had also discussed placing privacy panels on, particularly on that side of the house, because we certainly don't want to interfere with uh, Mr. Mayville's uh, considerations. But we probably would do that uh, anyway. So just for okay. privacy. I'm sorry. Can you? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I want to understand. Is the intent is to have the privacy panels or not? The intent really is to have privacy panels, particularly on the one side where we're so close. But as you can see from the diagrams, our house is set quite a bit deeper in the lot than Mr. Mayville's. And so, I, you know, I'm not certain that we can see anything from a proposed deck that we can't see already from our second story. Um, he is correct, you know, we're very close. His deck looks directly into our kitchen. Um, as far as I know, it hasn't been a big problem. What, what type of railing system are you proposing? We were talking a little bit about uh, the post and the wire, <clears throat> but that uh, has not been firmed up yet. We wanted to see if we could get permission to do it first. <laughs> The other, for the purpose of the deck, there's, I guess, three options. No deck. The second would be what you're talking about, removing that small pitched roof. And the third would be come out the set of windows and have a, a set of stairs go up and put a deck on the very top of the structure. Top of the second floor or the second story? Yes. Um, I don't think we had planned, actually we talked to somebody about that, but I don't think that really is in consideration. This seemed like a, a pretty easy thing to do and that way we'd have direct egress out of the bedroom um, just by putting in a sliding door. I don't think we had had any plans to put an exterior stairwell up to a, a deck on the roof of the building itself. So I have seen those, I know what you're talking about, but um, that wasn't really in, in consideration. So, so are you saying that the, a privacy barrier is part of this application um, on, on well, the northern side? We didn't specifically put side. it in there, but certainly um, we had talked about putting a privacy barrier. So there were or okay. plants or something so that we could safeguard both our privacy and our neighbor's privacy. Any further questions for Mr. Schoenmaker on, on his second appearance before us? Nope. Just have you had any kind of design work done? You said you, you talked with some contractors, but. Well, we've talked uh, to four different contractors, and so we've discussed it, but it hasn't, uh, we haven't come up with a contractual agreement with any of them yet. And so we have uh, two people working on estimates now. Have so they, I don't have the designs to show you. Um, is the interior open? Can you see the structure? Can your contractor see the structure in there of, of this room? 
what room are we discussing? The four season room, the, sorry, the room that's under the proposed oh, deck. from that, I mean, which, they, you know, that room has already been in place. That's basically just a deck that somebody put on in 18 or 1924 and then slowly closed it in. Okay. So it comes right off the kitchen from the rear of the house. So there's, uh, you know, a bathroom. I'm not certain how that is done. Yeah, it's a Deck on the roof of this well, uh, oh, I mean, I'll tell you just being kind of candid, I'm, I have a couple of concerns here, and I, I, my preference is to see applications once and not, you know, multiple times just in case something comes up. And I, I generally like the idea of what you're doing, but my concern is looking at this, not knowing what the deck looks like, even when you put a deck on it, you know, you're not putting a roof and then decking material over it. It's a roof system and then some sort of structure to support that deck. We don't know how high it is. We don't know what the railings look like. I, I would prefer to see a drawing. And I know there's chicken and egg associated with this. You don't want to go too far down the line to fully design something. Um, well, I just find it difficult just personally saying, you know, yes, do what you want, even with maybe a couple of stipulations in there um, without actually seeing it drawn. I think if you look at the back of the house, you can see you know, the windows that come out of that uh, four season room. Mm -hmm. So you know how high that is compared to the surrounding structures. And the two windows that are above that are the windows that come out of the second story bedroom. That's where the sliding door is gonna be. It, it can't be any higher than that. To, 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 to Kevin's point, uh, typically we do see measurements, we see actual depictions, so it makes it a little bit more difficult when we're just looking at the back end of a house and, and trying to envision what that structure is going to look like as opposed to having the actual meets and bounds um, description of, of you know how high it is and, and et cetera. So, it does, it does present a little bit more of a challenge for us as a board to consider something that we can't, we cannot see. But if we're not increasing the size of the footprint of the house, it's, we're seeing what the footprint looks like. And the hip roof on top is going to be flattened out. So that's going to be either a few inches lower or a few inches higher, somewhere around there. And above that, is simply, it sounds like it's going to be just a railing. So. True, but a part of our, a part of our mission is to consider view impacts. <laughs> um, Anyhow, just, just a commentary. Uh, additional questions for the applicant? The reason that we're um, having this discussion is there's a particular section of the code that is causing some issues here. And even if we were, would like this type of deck, we're struck with some of the things that are, that's talked about in the code here. And so if you had a application that showed exactly what you're talking about, and would have a full airing of, of the height and the shape and the viewing, it would allow us to have a little more comfort in, ex in, in, in um, exercising a, some authority that we have under this, in these two code sections. And the one that we're, we'll talk shortly about is that the impact on views. And because your house is so close to other houses and you have a neighbor who has, has raised this, it has, it has the issue has not gone away. And so if you had the application to show exactly the type of deck that could have mollified or, or resolved the potential issue with the neighbor. So I just wanted to express that, that um, there's some code sections that we're struggling with here. Okay, thank you. Additional questions for Mr. Schumacher? Hearing none, we will allow you to take your seat again. Thank you. Thank you for your input. So we'll engage in board discussion now, and I'm, I'm hearing some concerns, and I, I don't think they are necessarily concerns with the overall nature of the project necessarily, but just the fact that we can't really en envision the project. Uh, we can't envision the, the size and the scope of it. We're not quite sure what the dimensions would look like here. Uh, I think we can 
largely imagine how that would come out, but as, as we know from past considerations and past applications, usually we have the three foot by the four foot by the five foot, and, and we're able to actually come to a better understanding of what something might look like and how it might impact a neighbor's view. And that also gives uh, the neighbors an opportunity to evaluate uh, how they think it might impact the view. Um, so I, I'm not convinced that we're necessarily at a point, given the view issue, where we're willing to approve this. If, if, if I'm way out of line and start punching me in the, in the, in the ribs, um, what we might consider doing is tabling this or allowing a reapplication, and I don't know how, how that gets handled then specifically whether we could table and allow for some additional submissions. I just want to be very clear that from what I'm hearing, we are not necessarily opposed to this idea, but I think it's possible we need to see some additional information. But I want the other board members to, to, to jump in here. No, that, that, that I think is kind of where I am. I would not vote to deny this application um, because I, I like the concept. I. You know, I do believe that as times change, homes that were built in the teens and 20s and 30s and 80s, uh, you know, the natural evolution of things is such that uh, well thought out designs and proposals make a lot of sense. And, and conceptually, this makes a lot of sense. I'm a very visual person, <laughs> and I, I, I. You know, I, I, like I said, I like the idea. I just feel like we need a little more meat on the bones here. Um, I do think that, that you have addressed, uh, certainly, you know, there's no vegetation. Um, uh, there's not really soil erosion issues that I foresee here. Um, it doesn't appear that it's increasing the nonconformity, but again, without seeing the actual picture, I, I don't know that I can fully support that conclusion either. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. We, we, well, yeah, that's fine. We'll, we will yield. We're technically closed, but we'll, we'll yield time. Okay. Um, I live with uh, Kent Showmaker, and if you look at this drawing with the um, boundary survey in it, if you look at the area that I colored in on the map where uh, that is actually the roof of this Four Season room. It, it sits very, very far back on the lot from the other two residences on either side. And um, Mr. Mann builds the back portion of his house that you see there that juts out and is closest to ours is an exterior deck. And it has, you know, it's just an open deck. So, and it's on the same level as our, our kitchen and that sunroom. So this would be farther out back on the um, property and away, there's no room in Mr. Manville's home that looks out on that part of the, our roof. So I, um, I, I'm sorry, what, what is your name? I'm Linda Soares, I'm sorry, I didn't Linda, say that. Okay, okay. The resident, uh, yeah, the resident at 600 no, Preble. That's fine. So from, um, from my standpoint, I mean, both Kent and I have gone out on the roof and sat there to see what it would be like to have a deck there. And I don't believe I can see anything but maybe a little corner of the Manville deck there. And the other part of that section that juts out on his house farthest from us, I believe is a, a restroom or something. I've never been in their home, but so there's a little window that looks out on their own deck. So I don't know what they could see of even ours. Yes, I can see in their kitchen if I stand around looking from the sunroom, but. Well, I understand, and Ms. Soros, you'll note that I, I mentioned earlier when, in, in discussions that it looked as though, you know, the, the, uh, Mr. Showmaker's house is obviously set a little bit deeper. It doesn't look like there would be a, a terrible impact there. However, we have heard from the neighbor uh, mentioning that he feels as though there may be an impact, and, and as I think has been articulated by the board, um, 
this is not any expression of, of, of no, we, we can't do this. It's just, I think we no, I need just, a little additional information, but we do appreciate the clarification. Yeah, I just want to clarify that. And the Thank reason you. that we would not put a privacy barrier would be because it would be, we thought would be perhaps too obtrusive. So um, I would like to just have a planter up there. And that's basically a, an idea I've taken from the Manvilles because they don't have a barrier on their deck that looks right into our kitchen, but they put in the summertime, put plants out there. So I could do that too. <laughs> so I, I guess I would, uh, well, I'll ask you, thank you for your input. You can, just, just, oh, thank you, thank you very much. And we can continue with our discussion. We've got a little bit out of order. Should, should we uh, hear from Mr. Showmaker whether he wants an up or down decision tonight or if he's open to being tabled? That makes sense. Yep. Yes. Mr. Showmaker. We, 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 we can, It, it will, it will, it will. If we have some measurements, um, I think that will be very helpful, believe it or not. Uh, and, and then we will absolutely make the call. This is not the sort of thing that we kick down the road very frequently. Uh, our job is to make decisions, uh, and that's what we will do well, at the next I mean, meeting. I guess I would need some more specifics on what your requirements would be. You, you, have, you have to show the zoning board what you're proposing. They have to be able to look at your application and see exactly what you're proposing. Visually and by measurement. So visually and we would want to see uh, the, the photos you have of, of the back of your home are, are great, but we would want to see visually what, what is that addition going to actually look like on the back, which is pretty easily done this day and age um, with somebody know, who knows how to do that. I myself do not. <laughs> I don't have that technical expertise. But I, I think I'm. Yeah, that that would be that would be helpful if you, if you had, you know, if there were additional pictures of um, of the view corridors from up there, that might be helpful as well. Um, just to understand, I mean, we we can again sort of interpret on a, a 2D plane what it looks like, but if you have access up there and submitted some additional pictures, that would probably be welcome as well. And this is additional information so we can make an informed decision ourselves and it, you should not take this as any kind of no vote. I mean, this is not that. Uh, it's from what I gather from, from the consensus of the board. So would I submit those, that additional information by in the next couple of weeks for next month's? You, you, you would uh, work with Ben on, with, with, with Ben McDougal on, on how, how best to handle that. But, just my last point on this. Um, this is not an academic exercise. Um, the reason that we're talking about this is that we shall, as a board, consider certain information. So even if we would want, want this deck, there's missing pieces of the application that we need to consider first. And that's what we're talking about. Okay, so it's, I, it may seem like we're just adding things to, to the laundry list of things that you have to do, but um, this is a missing piece that would resolve a yes or a no on, on this type of deck. And so this physically show us that thing that you want to build there, not in words, but an actual picture and a, and a diagram and you know whatever it takes to actually express your idea so that it pacifies and makes us comfortable and also addresses your neighbor's concerns as well. And how, how best to deal with this? I mean, I think we, we can table I, it. Can I, you get additional submissions? Yeah, I, I think you can table it. Okay. Okay. And the next I, I can work it out. The next meeting is actually December fifth, right. yeah. because of uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays. Uh, so you you'd have an opportunity to come December fifth. If if uh, if you weren't ready then, there's meetings in January and February. Okay. So 
Do we need a motion? We should okay, so I, I move that we uh, table this request until additional information is provided. So that is a motion to table the request of Kent Showmaker, owner of the property at 600 Preble Street, map U2, lot 5, to expand a non-conforming single-family dwelling by adding a roof deck based on section 19-4-3B4 of the zoning ordinance made by Kevin. Do we have a second? Second. A second by Aaron. Uh, discussion on the motion. Hearing no discussion, all in favor of the motion? That's unanimous. We'll see you folks in December. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And find my agenda. That brings us to new business item two to hear the request of Teresa Simpson, representing the property owners of 3 Gladys Road, map U19, lot 728 to replace and expand a non-conforming single-family dwelling based on section 1943B3 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, before we turn to Ms. Simpson, I will ask uh, Ben McDougall to give us a quick synopsis of the application. Sure, uh, Ms. Simpson contacted me and sent me some, some site plans and architectural plans and inquired about the process to do this project. And the, the project is to put a second story on an existing single story dwelling. And a portion of the dwelling is outside of the setback line. So in order to go straight up with an addition, it uh, requires this type of approval under 1943B3. It is a re, they're reconstructing the first story as well. So it's a complete, reconstruction using the same foundation, but then starting foundation up and uh, doing a two-story house without further encroaching on the setbacks. Ms. Simpson, you look ready to go. I am. Good evening, board. Thank Have you for it. taking the opportunity to hear our project and, of course, Ben's help. Wonderful person to work with. Um, yeah, this is this. The Monsons have actually, Mr. Monson, Doug Monson, actually grew up in this existing ranch home at Three Gladys. The home was built in 1964. Uh, there's an attached garage. It's in a great neighborhood. The Monsons have two children, of which, just frankly, the, the house is, they've outgrown the home. So the house, being that it's in a neighborhood that they're comfortable, they just don't want to leave that particular neighborhood. So they've come to me to help design a new structure to accommodate just how they live, adding more space. And the second story was the only way that we could do this because of the setbacks. So we're actually gonna demolition the entire home right down to the foundation. The foundation is very structurally sound. There are no existing structural issues with it, so we'd like to keep the foundation as is and just rebuild in its place. There is an existing patio deck on the rear that we're going to redo. And on the front, we would like to take off the existing steps and just add a covered porch. You'll notice that the stairs and the deck are only so large because we're conforming to the setbacks on the front covered porch. There is obviously because of the height restrictions, we're going, we're adding about 12 and a half feet to the height. That is our new second floor. And given the pitch of the new home, the overall height at its largest point is 28 feet, nine inches. So we're still within the height restrictions. And we're coming to you this evening just to see if we can go ahead with the project. And uh, questions from Ms. Simpson? The front steps, I'm, I'm looking at the um, plan on the very last one, they're angled they right are. on that setback line? Right, exactly. It isn't on the setback, well it's or, on the setback line, but also, if you'd like me to turn over this piece of paper which actually shows the existing conditions, there's actually a hill there. And right okay. now, we want to build the stairs right into the hill, which is actually the setback. So the one and two go in the same. There's actually the existing garage slab is quite lower than the main house. Mm -hmm. Hence another reason why the stairs are gonna dive right into the hill. 
I, I just note it, you know, it says here it's not a boundary survey, and if you're going right, right. to that setback line, um, we can you pull just them back. Want to make sure right. <laughs> that that's mm -hmm. where you want to be within this within the setbacks, right? Yeah. Unique stairs. You showed us briefly the photo of what it looks like. Where is that photo? Is this it? is on Three Gladys Road. This is Sorry. in the materials that you oh. submitted. Do we have a copy of that? Photo? No, you do not. Okay. Would you like me to pass this around to you? No. Okay. Is um, is the basement full height? Are you, are you excavating yes. anything else? Or are you literally no. just building up from that foundation Correct. that exists? Right, for a new sill all the way up, new floor joists. Mm -hmm. It's an existing full basement. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the basement. Mm -hmm. So when you remove the structure above the foundation, the foundation will stay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And everything else builds up from there. Correct. Okay. On the last page of the application, you have a uh, footprint of, of the structure. What part is new? And this looks like the, the, the new structure. Is that just, that's the, same old structure. It is the footprint. The Correct. The footprint remains the same other than the and covered how about porch. The front, steps? the front porch and the steps are new on the front. However, there are existing concrete stairs that go into an, an existing front door. Is that in the picture that you have now? It is. And in the picture that you have there, mm -hmm. does that show where an approximation where the stairs would uh, the identical location of the stairs? Right where the front door is located in that floor plan basically where the stairs are in that plan is where the existing stairs are today. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I obviously see the, all the information about the new septic system. Um, so, you know, I don't think there's a, a worry about that necessarily. I personally, I, you know, that's, that's always good to see. Um, it looks like there's potentially a little more roof area with the covered porch uh, than, than maybe on the existing house. Is there any other concern with the soils, with erosion? You mentioned there's a hill there. Does that drain the, to anything? The hill is actually or? unchanged since okay. we are not excavating. We're gonna use post hole diggers, augers, to mm -hmm. actually put in tapered piers for the covered porch. So virtually eliminating any erosion control. The abatement of the, any runoff that's there now will remain as is. So we're not changing the habitat at all. Page. Um, there's a um, so it would be the southwest setback. If that makes sense. It says 25 feet setback. Yes. And then there is a light gray line that looks like a square rectangle. Yes. On the west side, is that what you're talking about? The little gray rectangle that? Well, it would be the, I would say southwest, but if you want to say west side, okay. Correct, sir. Yes, I apologize, yes. <laughs> that, uh, that little gray rectangle is a replacement deck, but according to the ordinances, we are allowed for accessory structures or decks of 15 foot setback. So I go to page three of 10, and mm -hmm. there's a side profile of the drawing. Mm -hmm. And I see what appears to be a deck, but there's a windbreak, privacy walls on the deck? There, it's a railing on one side because we actually have an exterior shower. And you'll see that on the rear elevation. And how is that connected to the, to the house? It's just a, a, is that part of the current structure? There's an existing structure that we're removing 
and replacing this with the new one, there are no railings on the existing patio area. So the thing that is there now, yes. that's represented by that footprint with the thin black line that I was referring to on the last page. No, the, the only the new conditions are being shown on the last page of the plans. There is no existing conditions shown on any of the plans. Are you trying to figure out where that wall is? Or where the railing is? Uh, um, well, whatever that is, um, a portion of it is in the setback. And I'm trying to understand, is it a new build, new structure? Or is it simply replacing something that's already there today? It is replacing an, a, an existing structure, but it is being moved down to the greatest extent to the setback. So the existing patio deck that's there now is closer to the east than where the new one is proposed. Can I approach you? Can yes, you drop please. Me? Or I apologize. <laughs> Where the existing one is. So what's this? In this is the new proposed replaced deck. All right, and where is the, where's the current structure that you're thinking about moving from? In this vicinity right here. The existing deck patio is in that vicinity right okay. here. Okay, so, okay, if I understand correctly, so this is not replacing anything. This would be a brand new deck in the second deck. Yes, sir. Okay. But the, the setback for decks in that zone is 15 feet. So they're not proposing, they're, they're not asking for any sort of variance or relief for the deck. That, that could be built on there today with a, with a building permit. Because that's me. accessory. Correct. Yeah, okay. small, small accessory structures have a separate, separate setbacks. Um, open decks have a different setback. Goes down to 15 feet. All right, somebody's got to ask Is there a view corridor here? You're going from one story to two stories. My recollection is this kind of backs up into some uh, conservation land, maybe. I don't know who it owns. Is, a con is it a conservation land? Or I believe it is, but they do have a, a neighbor behind them that actually had written a letter a while back saying, yes, we would love to be able to have and be able to see. And Ben, I never gave this to you because honestly, I just got it myself too about a week ago. I'm so, I'm but sorry, we didn't think. What, what did the letter say? The letter actually is from the neighbor behind them okay. who would actually be impacted by the view, and they're all for it. They actually gave their graces for it. We haven't gone to that part of the program yet, but I appreciate <laughs> you being so proactive. <laughs> Additional I'm questions. good. Additional <laughs> questions from Ms. Simpson? Matt? Uh, no. No? Okay. All right. And we can talk about an executive session as to that viewpoint, but okay. Yeah, no, no further questions about no that further. at the moment? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Any uh, comments from members of the public? All right, Ben, what, what have you heard from, uh, from folks on this via email, phone call, et cetera? I, I got an email from Juana Butter, the northerly of Butter, that asked a couple general questions about it. I responded and they said, sounds good. Okay. All right, so uh, hearing no further comment, we will close the, the hearing to public comment and go into, into session. Uh, Thoughts on the application, Matthew? I know you. It sounds like you have one or two. No, you know this is the type of application where I'd like every application to be. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, it, although you didn't include the photo that, of what it is now. I mean, you get gold stars. Can I second that? <laughs> in the after, it helps. It really, it really helps. Um, and also on the on the viewpoint, um, you know the. the Who's behind it? It's Wilderness behind. And it's just from Gladys Road. And I don't think there's an issue. Um, 
Okay. Am I right? I, I mean, this I, is well I, that's behind. To be clear, I did not think there was an issue, but I thought it was a question worth yep. addressing. Um, and, the, and what we and we walk through it. I mean, the, making the best out of the, the fairly small lot. So, yeah. And you know, what else do I want to talk about? Chris Sale takes the mound in just a few minutes. <laughs> Sorry. Can I say that? Further further thoughts, uh, questions, comments? Second everything Matt said. I'm I'm good. Great application. Um, I, I this is I think a, uh, you know, it has to come before us, obviously, because it, it is a non-conforming law. But I think you know this is the intent of um, the ordinance. Yeah. Dear, so. I mean, we all well. I mean, we can talk about it, but the, the code sections it does meet uh, what we have to look at, um, and it'll yep. be part of the findings. But if you have any other thinking on it. No, I, I, I agree. I mean, this, uh, I think this uh, clearly uh, is a well put together application. I agree. Thank you for that. Um, but uh, I, I think the uh, the application, the plan, clearly meets um, all the all the uh, different criteria that we have to satisfy in, in moving forward with approval. So, uh, if there are no further questions or comments, I would. Um, seek a motion, um, entertain a motion to approve the request of Teresa Simpson representing the owners of the property at 3 Gladys Road, map U19, lot 728, to replace and expand the front porch based on section 19-4-3B3 of the zoning ordinance. I, I think we need to just amend that because it's not just replacing and expanding the front porch, it's replacing Replacing the structure. Yeah. Replacing and expanding the structure. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So replacing and expanding the, the structure uh, per application. Yes. Based on section, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Got that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Ah, so moved. So moved. Kevin moves. Do we have a second? Aaron is, is on second. Uh, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Unanimous, very good. We will go ahead and move forward with approval of the findings of fact. Proposed additional, uh, proposed findings of fact, the property is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. There is an existing single family dwelling on the property. Proposed additional findings of fact, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, location of the septic system, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Additional, uh, proposed additional findings of fact two, the proposed structure will not increase the non-conformity of the existing structure and proposed additional findings of fact three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. Um, any thoughts that those are the proposed findings of fact? Maybe one, one friendly amendment, um, change the word relocation to replacement under finding of fact, additional finding of fact one. Makes sense to me. So those are the, the proposed findings of fact. Do we have a, a motion to approve the proposed findings of fact? Just out of clarification, Kevin, where's, where's that? Uh, under additional findings of fact number one, the very last word. Okay, great. Change from relocation to replacement. Okay, thanks. Uh, I move we accept the findings of fact so with that friendly moved. amendment. So moved by Kevin. Do we have a second? Second. Aaron seconds. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? That's unanimous. Uh, that 
concludes the business portion of our meeting, and I don't think we have too much else to do. Congratulations, folks. Thank you for your work. Thank you. And the next meeting will be December 5th. There is no November meeting given the Thanksgiving holiday, uh, and no later December meeting given the, the Christmas holiday. Um, so we'll see everybody December 5th. Well, let's see what, con what concert it conflicts with. It always conflicts with the concert. I'm sure there will be something. In the <laughs> meantime, go Sox. Thank you, folks.